welcome to my model building channel. Today we're going to look at my, my collection and my stash. Future videos will be inbox reviews and build reviews. Before I start any new models, I'll be going over reviews of some of the kits I've already built that had problems. So you have fair warning before you buy it, uh, what you have to do to fix it. I might also do some other videos over um, so role-playing games or fantasy books that I like to read if anybody's inter interested in that. Well, I say welcome to my channel and we'll go around the house first and, and, sh and look at my collection of my stash. So I'd like to start here in the in the office where I have a couple kits. The first is the HMS Titanic. It's a 74th, 75th anniversary edition from Ravel. I found it in a flea mark for 10 euros. Really good, I thought. It came with a cool package, but I threw it away. I don't know why. The only problem was, was the hole was really badly warped. And I fixed it for the most part. You can still see in the back there's a little bit of problem there. But for the most part it was fixed. I didn't get the line on top very straight either just didn't stay. I also got these uh, these cool shit, cool signs here from eBay and it shows uh, when and where it was built, information over the ship, like length, breadth, and uh, also where, where and when it was sunk. They're pretty cool looking I think. And the next one is the USS Arizona. I did a pre-war build with the color on top of the the turrets. Also did in the, the, the dark gray. I'm more in the gray field. I know at one point it was gray. I don't know if they ever painted it blue or if they started to paint it blue. Who knows. But it definitely was gray. And I think it looks pretty good. Then here on the top, we have a Bell H-13, the helicopter they used from MASH. Also a very, one of my favorite series. And This is a space shuttle and uh, the boosters from Ravel, 144 kit. It wasn't very, you know, like most of the Ravel 144 kits, the fit was really bad. I had to do a lot of work to get it to look decent. But I didn't do as much as I could have. It still looks decent. Let's see the inside. Here on the top, hanging from the ceiling, we have the USS Enterprise, NCC-1701, from the original series. As well as the 1701A from the movies. Seventeen oh one A is one of my favorite Star Trek ships. I think that I really like the design of it. Now we're in the living room where I have a few kits as well. Two cars, sixty six Mustang three fifty GT, and a sixty nine Camaro SS. Uh. I wasn't so happy with the color on the Mustang. I used Ravel spray, but the color on the on on the um, on the Camaro looks really good. I think it was for a Tamaya spray. Um, they both look good. I think. I just wasn't so happy with this red color. It should have been should have been brighter. We have as well here on the top of the trunk 
couple of aircraft. I decided to build, start building some aircraft after when I was working at the the International Airport in Frankfurt. Here is a Airbus A320 in Air Berlin livery. Then we have a, a Boeing 737 in Tui, Tui Fly livery. The Haribo Gold Bear. This camera doesn't do a re really good job of focusing sometimes. And then here we have a Avro RJ185 Swiss Air livery. This kit had a lot of problems with the tail. The tail wasn't was really really crooked, and it took a lot of cutting, filling, and sanding to get it straight. And the landing gear in the back was also a major problem getting them straight. I had to break them and re-glue them multiple times to get them straight. But in the end, I think it looks pretty good. Here we have a Boeing 747 from Iron Maiden. It was a really cool kit, and me and my son both love Iron Maiden, so I decided to build it. Like all, all 144 kits from Ravel, it had fit problems, especially here in the front, which you can still see. Even though I put massive amounts of putty in it, it didn't help much. But it was... I had already painted it beforehand. The decals were really, really good. Better than most of the decals of these Ravel kits. Also here we have a Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. A really old kit from that I've had since I was a teenager. And also a TIE Interceptor, the gold edition from AMT, which I've also had so long. The sun is sun the sun has bleached it to like a it's not so gold as it was. <laughs> it's almost silver now. And that's these all here. So now we've moved up to the attic where I have a lot of my built kits as well as a lot of my stash. Um, the house isn't that small, but there's not a lot of space. You know, we have kids. There's not a lot of space in the uh, in the house to keep everything. So here we go. And first off, we have some armor. Here is an M47 Patton in German in German camo. I used a faded olive for it. A Jeep, Willie's Jeep. It's an SU-122 tank destroyer. An M12 artillery piece with a 155 millimeter cannon. And a Leclerc from the French Army. And next, we have a BTR-80, a ZSU-23-4, in the future it, this will uh, be redone, new camo and decals. Here is a T-54. BMP-1, T-55, and the SU-100, another Russian tank destroyer. Here we have a couple of Panzer IIs, one in uh, Africa Dunkelgelb, and the other one in a camo pattern with I forgot Goon Brown. Here's the SDKFC 251. And a couple of the 
che Czechoslovakian tanks that the Germans used in World War II. This is the, the 35T and the 38T both. And here is a special one that I've had for a long time. It's a tiger elephant. I did zimmer it on it by myself uh, with a putty and a screwdriver. See the putty here and some good light. There yeah, you can see the zimmer. It looks like a worn down zimmerit. And it took a whole long it took a long time to do. But I was pretty proud of the job I did on it. It's on the back too. I repainted it not too long ago. It was pretty chipped from being so old. And the last row we have a K1 from the South Korean army. <laughs> yeah. There's an M51 Serpa Sherman from Israel. They replaced the uh, they put a 105 millimeter cannon on it. And uh, I think it was a new turret too. Upgraded optics and everything. Here's a STRV-103 from the Swedish Army. A T-26 with a, a dual turret from uh, it's a pre-World War II tank from Russia. Here's also one of the older ones, it's T-72. I did it in East German winter camouflage. And here's a T-59, which is a, a Chinese-built T-55 in an Iraqi I, I dusted it up really good because Iraq is really dusty. I was there for eight, for 11, 15 months. <laughs> yeah, it was not that great. Here we have a bunch of aircraft, mostly World War II aircraft. Devastator. Here's a wild cat with really evil looking eyes. Shark shark mouth. Looks pretty cool though. And a spit spitfire. This is a bear cat. And a wild cat. Well, here's a Russian Yak 3. A lot of detail in the front, engine, guns, and everything. A26 Invader, used in the Korean War. They upgraded the B26. One of my favorite liveries, uh, one of my favorite nose arts, my, I mean, is here, the Lady Lil. It's a really beautiful aircraft with a really nice nose art. The decals on the front didn't turn out all that well. It was an old kit, old decals. But I still think it looks pretty good, and I love all the guns that they put on the front of this thing. Like 850 cals, and on the sides here are also more 50 cals. Plus, turret on top, turret in the back. Here we got a P 47 Thunderbolt, a B 26 Marauder, P 61 Black Widow, another one of my favorite heavy aircraft. Also has a lot of uh, guns on it, turret on top, and there on the sides, some guns too. And here's a Typhoon, 
British Typhoon. Another B26G. This was done in nose art from a movie that I can't remember the name of right now. But it looks nice. It wasn't a real nose art that it was used. Gorgeous. And here is a American torpedo bomber. That would be the uh, Avenger. Devastator. Haka Hurricane. There was problems with this one when I was building it. The uh, propeller stuck out quite a ways and I had to cut it down to make it fit. I think the uh, can't really see it with this camera, but the uh, it's not really right in the back either. Here, here in the back is the Corsair, a Mosquito, and one of my more modern aircraft, F-15 Eagle, turned out really good. Here's some German. Aircraft, JU-87 G2 with a tank buster, 37 millimeter and a tank cannons on the, under the wings. Really nice. The other G JU-87 was an old simple kit from Ravel. There's no interior detail and it's just really a, a regular B version. Here's a Dornier 335. It was a really... Uh, innovative aircraft. Instead of using two nacelles for the two propellers, two engines, they put one in the front, one in the back to save weight. Therefore it was it was faster than other heavy aircraft. Here's the ME163, one of the one of the first jet-powered aircraft to see service. A BF110, also a really nice heavy fighter. Used often in the war. Here's an Italian Reggiani 2002. And in the back there, it's a Folk Wolf 190. I had redone the decals on this one as well. Some years ago, because it was looking pretty ragged, with some microsol and micro set. And here's a, another tank uh, ground attack aircraft from the Germans. Has a really big cannon in the front. Looks pretty cool. And here on the bottom, some Japanese aircraft. This is a Type 99 Val. Looked. I painted it to look uh, like um, like a Pearl Harbor aircraft. With the check, I ch even checked the uh, the sign in the back to make sure it was the right from the right aircraft carrier. And this is a torpedo bomber. This is a, a zero, I suppose. Sometimes I forget which ones are which, the Japanese, because some of them look pretty similar. But this is a cool one, because this is a J1N1. And it does look different than the other ones. A lot different. You can tell it's a pretty innovative. The Japanese had a lot of different aircraft in the World Wars. World War II. So here we're going to look at some of my stash too. We have quite a bit here. BM-8-24, IR-80, Mirage-3, Tempest, the Cobra, 
Glossier Sea Gladiator, AMX 30, KV1. Here's a modern, modern, modern German armor. Modern Japanese tank, Type 90. A German Fuchs. A JS2 Stalin. Challenger, AS90, which I've had forever. Panzer Jaeger 1, M113, Hetzer, another half track with a, a half track with the, uh, an RFK gun, a Chieftain, Mark 5, an M60A1. And here's some more, a PE2 Russian, JU88. HE 111, JU 52, B 24, which is one of my uh, B 24s just look awesome. I never really liked the B 29, but the B 24 is great looking. Here's a uh, space shuttle with a uh, 747 together. Here is the HMS Victory. I'm really excited to start this one, but I won't be starting it until we move. We have to move beginning of next year. As well as a Ventura and a Chinook. Which somebody gave me the Chinook. It was pretty cool. As well as these, uh, the Porsche here. Both were gifts. And there's, there's a lot more here, too. Hold on, ME 262, a couple of pins and fears, the Lukes, more, more uh, Star Trek models. A little light here. Yeah. Osprey, which I've had forever too. And here's a whole box full, a whole box full of unbuilt kits. I'm not going to go through what they all are. We'll see them eventually. And now we have to uh, go down into my man cave. And now we have to go into my man cave where I also have a, a lot of projects and a lot of my collection. Here, Here's a lot of my kits that I need to build still. Aircraft and tanks, plus a couple of Star Trek, uh, Star Wars kits. More here. Ship. Another airliner, that'll be a lot. Churchill, Flak Panzers, Matilda, Baka D7, MS-406, which I'm excited to build too, eventually. Still more unbuilt kits. A lot of them. The M46 and M24 I'll be building pretty soon. King Tiger. Pretty much all the German kits. Tiger. This is Panzer, Panzer IV F2, but it's actually F, uh, Austrian G. And this is all the stuff I was planning to build next, but I put it all on pause for now because we're moving. I'll still probably build a couple of the armor kits, maybe the, 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 the uh, not really sure which ones right now. But the aircraft and ships will stay on hold. Here we have a 747 from Lufthansa. Another bad reveal kit. You can see how bad the fit was, and I... It was my first airliner that I did, and I didn't do a lot of, put any effort into it at all. I just painted it, put the decals on it pretty much. I did more to this one, A340 from S Scandinavian Airlines. But there's some mistakes still. 
with the paint because I had to mix the paint myself. It's kind of an off off brown, brownish gray, and uh, I ran out. I didn't mix enough, so it's a little bit weird. And here we have USS Saratoga. Also bought a shield for it. Yeah. USS Missouri. It has the camo at war when it went into the uh, Tokyo Bay for this peace treaty. And this is a picture I found on the internet with it going into Tokyo Bay. That's why I painted it off of. And here is the USS Texas. I haven't finished it yet because the, uh, the photo etch was getting pretty nervy. Here's all the the little airplanes for the USS Saratoga. In all, there's going to be about 30. I built eight flights, but I still have these uh, F3 fighters to build. They're all clear parts, so you have a clear canopy. Don't know how well it's going to go, but we'll see. Here's a Hemikuda. Not quite finished, just have some details on the outside to do. I think it looks great. I like how I did the interior. The light gray turned out pretty well. Here's some projects I've been working on. SU-27 from Academy. The kit was good. The decals weren't so good. They were falling apart when I was putting them on. We'll go over that later. Japanese fighter. Deep, Deep Space Nine space station. An A-10 Warthog. They're pretty much on hold till we get moved. And here we have the USS Reliant from Star Trek 3. It took quite a bit because the uh, decals were really yellowed, but I just patted them down, flipped them over, patted them down again, and they went on clear after that. But they broke apart in some places, especially these stripes. Here's the rest of my Star Trek. Katinga Cruiser. A warp, a uh, bird of prey, Klingon cruiser from original series, Katinga cruiser. First one was Vorcha, I guess. This is a Cardassian warship. It's gonna get some detail painting eventually. And a Maquis ship will also get some detail painting original, uh, eventually. And here we got a C-47 that I, I built specially. I uh, ordered the decals from the States. It costs uh, quite a bit of money, but it's a, a aircraft that's sitting in front of the flight for, uh, Frankfurt International Airport from the Berlin Airlift, called the Berlin Train, if you can read it. Uh, it looks a lot better than the one by the airport, because the one by the airport's really ran down. Here quickly is, well here's Airwolf, the Bell 222 from the series. Uh, AMT X-Wing, really uh, old, older kit. The uh, canopy's falling off. The pilot's not in it right now. He's sitting around here somewhere. Here's a, a Y-Wing and a B-Wing from Bandai. These are the newer kits. I think they're really great kits. I did some extra painting on both of them. I always do extra painting because it looks better, I think. And from Back to the Future, the DeLorean. And we have a, have a Hummer, the one like I drove in the Army. I put my name on it and everything. The Panzer IV, Stoop Fit IV, Panzer III, Panzer I, Martyr III M, Japanese Type 97, and SDK, SDKFC 251 that I did uh, as a field modification with a 3.7 millimeter flak. And also a, a, a field modification as a, as a, a camouflage pattern now. Something they, they would have used in the Eastern Front, I think. Kubel Wagon, Type 52, the old Kafer. And here's a, another T26 with a single turret. One of the upgraded ones. That's used in the late 30s. And we have a Hemet, like a, a Hemet like I drove in the Army. With a Kubel Wagon in the back. I thought it was... <laughs> fit really good. 
I put my unit and everything on the front, but you can't read it. Not really. Okay, M41 Walker Bulldog. Uh, upgraded Pan Pan uh, Panzer III. SD KFC 222. M3 Lee. And the British. Uh, uh, old T3476, a kit. I've had this kit for about 20 years. It was my first try at Winter Camo. And I, I overdid it. But it, it, it looks pretty good, I think, for one of my older kits. It's a BT, P, BT7 droid, Russian kit. And an M3. Also, I did a lot of weathering on this one. It's probably one of my better ones. The MiG-3. I mean, 164. There's a Yak 3. Here's a French fighter. Really like the camo on it. A P 51 Mustang. There's another Italian fighter. A Tony. A Japanese. I really think I did a great job in the camouflage. Um, it took a long time to get those lines on there by hand. I do all painting by hand. Uh, BF 109. In the future, I'll give a new one with Desert Camo. And then Oscar. Old Japanese fighter. Used prior to the war, but also used during the war. And here's a, another Japanese fighter. Here's an M551. M163. Both missing a few parts. I'm gonna looking to get parts for them. 8.8 centimeter flak. Nebel Warfer. Here's a couple of 7.5 millimeter, millimeter, uh, 7.5 centimeter and a tank cannons. And here's some of the smaller ones, 3.7 and 5, with a, a tent that's falling apart. I'll have to fix that eventually. And lastly, we have here uh, a Cadillac. The Cadillac is finished except for the windshield. The windshield got a bad crack in it when I was trying to put it in. I haven't been able to fix it yet. Here's Knight Rider, the kit car, without a hood. Another 737 from Tui. P38 Lightning. Really bad kit from Academy. Didn't fit well. Been doing extra work on it, trying to get it to look right. And uh, Hell Diver. I put the Edward flaps on it. And I still have to do some painting and, and details before I finish it. Here's the big boy, the K5 Leopold. Been working on it for a long time, but I haven't got a saw to cut the wood for the diorama table I want to make. Uh, and an aircraft gondola. I put a 20 millimeter quad flag in it. Plus MG34. Made some ammo cans. A VR360. C14 lock locomotive. I plan on doing a little bit more weathering on it, especially on the bottom. I'm gonna deaden that red sound, make it look like it was used more. And I bought this G10 covered wagon for ammo, ammo storage. I have to build it still. It's a pretty new release. I'll be doing a review on it when I build it and before I build it. You can see here the table that I made with a couple boards. I have putty and stuff to put over it. And here's the legs uncut. That's what I need to saw for. Because I haven't... And it'll go somewhere in the new house. And that's, and that's it. And what I have so far. And uh, I always always buy new ones when I find them on sale. I have a, a huge wish list of, of kits that I want. Like a BR-52 a locomotive. To go with the, the railgun. Then it has a, a push a push locomotive and a normal locomotive. But I have a huge list of kits that I really would like. And I actually need a lot more shells for them. But uh, if you enjoy what you've seen and are interested, please subscribe and like my video, hopefully. <laughs> and 